We are live. Welcome, gentles all, to tonight's installment of Bardic Inspiration. This is Dungeons and Dragons in Shakespearean style. And with me this eve are the Headless Marys, uh, who are back after a fortnight away. Um, tonight, we will be joining them as their adventure continues uh, with our level eight adventurers. Uh, who are at Donville Manor after many long adventures have led them from their home and the forest of Argon, which they rescued through their heroic uh, escapades, and through Orst and down the Great Lewin River all the way to the seaside town of Halefort, and now Donville Manor, uh, where we pick up with them and the once mysterious stranger Vela, whom they are now there to install in her rightful place as heir to the manor. Uh, I will turn it over to the cast to give you the specific recap of what happened in last session. As soon as we get two minutes on a clock. Mel, are you on that for us? Can't believe we graduated to two minutes. You've always been two it's minutes. It's always been two minutes. Yeah, I thought it used to be one. Uh, Have you been uh, timing us as one? <laughs> well, the time <laughs> <laughs> Okay, timer has started. Go, recap. Okay, uh, uh, RIP Botram. Botram was dead. Oh yeah, he died. Yeah, it was, it was a horrible death. <laughs> In fact, let's spend two minutes talking about yeah. all the ways. Did Bertram, did Bertram get run over? There was, a, there was a, I remember there was a cart chase. There was a cart yeah. chase. Yeah. Oh yeah, that Bertram was fruitful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't Buckle land ski? He had to to turn it up. He didn't land ski. Yeah. Um, so we met a steward. The steward said, "Hey, come on in." And then we uh, went into the morgue, not the morgue, the tombs. <laughs> the tomb. Yeah, we ha ha talked to the medical examiner and uh, <laughs> got the DNA and all of that stuff <laughs> through some controlling water. Uh, and Buckle tried to get some <laughs> armor it. and get some. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm very. It's very hard to find out the top subject sometimes with Buckle, or is it? <laughs> Buckle was Buckle was gifted some very fancy golden armor. Nice, and he will claim it as it is his due forever, forever more. We found out that Rav was an avid anti-masker. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was an unfortunate discovery for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so great. So many uh, the people who work in the castle have, have gone, fearing that there's a plague. Um, right. to the dragons. They think they're all going to get infected. However, we discovered that the most likely cause of their death is actually uh, some type of uh, puncture, poison in the foot. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Let's start playing the game now. All right. You're good. Good to go. Let's How are we for play. time now? Welcome. Hey, hey there it is. Is this, is this episode number 45? Is this episode 43? 44? I believe. I believe so. It's episode eight for the folks who have been watching on stream. Right. But for our group as a whole, since we started last year, I think this will be number 46 or 47. Welcome, uh, Gentles Hall, to episode 46 <laughs> of this is, Must this, Die. It is 47. <laughs> it is 47, I think. Um, which is, we're closing in on 150 hours of this campaign. Wow. It is. Total. And you've been here with us all the way. <laughs> Friends. Uh, we <laughs> pick up Before where you, and when we stuff. left off uh, on this. Uh, the 20th you know. of Peas Blossom, uh, the second month of the year 1600 on Aorn's calendar. You are at Donville Manor, uh, and you had just left your analysis of the bodies, and you rendezvoused with Buckle, uh, who was being led from the armory by, I believe, Marcus, whom you mm -hmm. were with, the guard that you were speaking with, uh, who looks a little bit um, befuddled uh, leading Buckle along. So you can accompany him down the hall to an office uh, where you can see Vela and Bertram and Myra who are deep in conversation and are at a very large ornate wooden desk that is covered with papers of various descriptions and stacks of books and ledgers surround them on various tables. Um, it looks like a state of organized chaos um, that has recently been made less organized by, uh, by the new folks who have come in. 
Uh, Myra is moving back and forth between piles and pointing to things uh, from multiple ledgers at once as she sort of talks them through. But they pause uh, as a lot of you walk in. Uh, and Marcus looks, uh, stands to the side, having sort of uh, welcomed you in uh, and just... What do you do, Headless Marys? It's over to you. I... Stone Whip on Bertram. <laughs> Why do you hate Bertram? <laughs> Everyone hates Bertram. Why does anyone oh, hate Bertram? Bertram. <laughs> My answer, peer pressure. I, I walk up to Myra and I say, um, as, as, as the new interim captain of the guard, I would like a, a full um, explanation of what these papers are, if, if you would please. Um, the, the papers, are you referring to the papers that are on the desk in front of oh, them? Yes, yeah. Okay. Buckle, make a persuasion check. <laughs> so oh, no. Can I assist him just by being de different? <laughs> just Tell me how you're being differential, different. Caliban, in your play, Doctor. I, I, kind of, I will, uh, yeah, give us uh, like a little bow to Buckle as he you says that he's the captain. Perception, persuasion is persuasion. the is the one. Uh -oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are pushing your luck. That's a nat one. And a nat one. Minus one. No <laughs> way. You double zeroed. Are you kidding me? I've hey, literally uh, never seen that in my life. I Buckle, I to take it like, Buckle dies on the spot. That's on YouTube. That's what right oh, screenshotting that so hard later. That's the, that's the thumbnail. That's the thumbnail for this week. I don't care what happens. That's incredible. Is that like cat eyes instead of snake eyes? <laughs> this is a um, moment for the rest of the week. What yes. a strong start. Good time to yeah. shout out Matt Day, creator of Rollcast. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Which allows us <laughs> to have these virtual dice rolls. Uh, oh, buckle bless. Wait those dice. <laughs> um, there is just pin drop silence for a second. Uh, is that the three of them sort of look at each other and then look up at you, Buckle. Uh, and Myra <laughs> clears her throat and says, um, well, uh, we, we shall soon see about... Uh, Captains, uh, and 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 how you will all best be considered useful to my lord and my lady. Um, uh, we are happy to discuss the matters of state, and then Vela sort of nods and takes over and says, uh, "Yes, good, good, Sabako. We we are just seeing some rather strange correspondence from my." my sister and overviewing the accounts um, things are generally in order as Myra said but I'm afraid there's been some confusion as of late due to some kind of mishap in, in, in delivery and uh, I'm afraid it's all rather urgent we're going to need to take care of a few things as well as making sure I can be formally instated here but forgive me, a lot of you were... But have you found anything of interest? I... I say we have. For we have found an infringement on the rights of the people! Revel, perhaps I can explain best. Um, Bertram says, yes, I think that would be best. Uh, we, we think that uh, it was not some uh, plague or disease, but in fact poison administered by uh, a needle in the foot. Aye, can be the needle in the foot, or it can be when thou dost cloth thy face, thou art breathing thine own CO2, tis factually oh. proven. Telekinetically pushes him again. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say telekinetically? Yeah. Telekinetically. Incredible, I love that. <laughs> oh, your rep hasn't seen this happen yet. I don't know. Or have you? It's been a couple of times. Podrick's been shoved a couple of times this way last session, but I don't think Rav has. So um, we've been playing this as a Mel. You can make a player choice to let it happen if you want, or if you think Rav would resist, you can roll. Uh, I think it's a strength or dex save. I mean, I feel like he'd be too startled to resist, right? He'd just sure. <laughs> so Rav would just like stumble, <laughs> toddling forward, and you have to like catch yourself on the desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Lost one hit point. Did you push me? Maybe. I'm trying to remember oh, the details on that after we watch. <laughs> uh, I don't think it was, but I'll do it again. 
the day the one. It's probably from wearing a mask. It takes away. <laughs> Continually. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is our conclusion. Well, I suppose it is it is of some small measure of relief that there is not a deadly plague, as all seem to be fearing. Um, you can actually hear, especially those of you with high passives, Barwin and Rav and Caliban, um, actually most of you have high passives, I think, except maybe Buckle. <laughs> um, Buckle is pretending to read the papers on the desk as the thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Marcus lets out an audible sigh behind you and like catches himself, but like that seems to catch him in the guts uh, when he hears that said out loud. Um, and Bertram says, and, and uh, it is, I suppose, as our sources, as we believed, there is some foul play that we must get to the source of. Myra, um, I beg your pardon, please, Barbara. Uh, I was only meaning to um, you know, ask if there was something else we could do in, to, in helping spread the news. You mentioned your staff are, are well out of sorts. Yes. Um, Myra, perhaps it would be well to have a, a sort of convening of, of all present. Uh, if all of us are there, I suppose it is also a good time to, to well explain everything. And they are quite shaken, as we understand it. Uh, Myra, Myra takes over and says, "Yes, of course they are. Uh, they're all very much flummoxed. Uh, I will speak to them, but it might be, it might do well to have." Well, one such as yourself, Barwin, and, and those of you who are inclined to speak of who you are and what you have learned, you might be a sort of a voice with the consent of my lady to, to lend your expertise to the matter and set their minds at ease. I shall assure them of, of your good graces, and of course, uh, with you, Barwin, being one of the hand, uh, I think perhaps you should win some support that way, and perhaps can put all of this behind us long enough to see to the re, the restaffing of the estate, intending and yet, to. Yes. Someone killed. Well, <clears throat> is that not something that is somewhat pressing too? Yes, good Caliban. You are correct. Obviously, um, if there are killers about, they may be about and they may be still amongst us. It would seem to me that whoever did kill uh, your your sisters and your family already knew it wasn't a plague and therefore would not be feared. Is it only your family that have been killed? Is there others outside of your family or is that the connection? Uh, Vela takes over and there there have been those of my family and one or two other servants beside who did work closely with them then mayhap it's best for the staffers to leave for the moment so we are not to lose more lives I, I suppose it is a matter of trust, isn't it? Are there people that you... Are these all people that you trust? Were there any strangers that did come into uh, the, the Vale of Dons? Or are we, are we dealing with uh, people that have betrayed you that you would know? Well, um, it is... Rather strange you should mention that, Caliban. Uh, Myra was just acquainting me with some rather irregular correspondence from... from Lyra. From Lila. I... Apparently there was a sort of 
a disagreement or a disagreeable situation. Uh, a particular servant of my sister's, a man called Worthington. Um, my sister, in a few of these letters, hath complained of him as of late. Uh, in some tones more subtle, when sending letters of apology, apologizing for some mistake or complaining of an absence, and some not so subtle, it seems uh, he hath been reprimanded a time or two of late for loitering here in this office, being seen here without any call to be so. And here, this most recent account, uh, doth seem that he was charged with delivering uh, matters of some great import to the city, to Hailford, and hath been remiss or tardy in doing so. And as a result, there has been oh, some great calamity, uh, an, an order that should not have been delivered, delivered uh, here. Um, and then uh, Vela passes over to Myra uh, um, a letter that she was holding, uh, and I will share it with you now. Maybe just a moment. We'll switch frames here in a sec. Can you use your journal writing voice? <laughs> Could you please define what that might be? Um, uh, um, dear. <laughs> Evan Hansen? Hansen, is that what this is? <laughs> <laughs> this is? Well, you heard it here first. This is now musical. <laughs> hey, uh, um, I've switched over. Uh, so now, those of us on the stream, and hopefully, if you switch to your map view here at Rollcast, you should be able to see it. Um, should we all to read a paragraph at a time? Popcorn style reading. One of you like to read it out loud. It's dated the 15th of Peace Blossom, 1600. That's yeah, this year. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Okay, thanks. To the Right Honorable Stuart Maximilian, I humbly thank you, Popcorn Podrig. <laughs> I don't know what the. I know yeah, what I don't that. know. What what I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... This might be an American. It's I'll intuitive. Be... Get, you'll get it. <laughs> For your timely delivery of our seasonal popcorn Avery. <laughs> All right, you're abusing the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that how you play it? Yeah, but you're supposed to read a little more before you do. Oh, that's. Well, you didn't exactly set a precedent. Seasonal sentiment. Yeah, sentiment. very intuitive. <laughs> and for the ample exactitude which does characterize thy work, popcorn Avery. I just read this out and say popcorn in someone's name. Is that how it goes? Yes, yeah. yes. That seems to be It's intuitive. But, um, but whoever whoever's name you say, it, they have to pop. Or to pop? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you didn't pop that time. Now we're ready for our break. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I plan so many things for these sessions. <laughs> what do you mean pop? Like, like yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Lost. You have my sincere apologies for the tardiness of our edicts and our local accounts. Is that how you say that? Edicts? Edicts. <laughs> Today we discovered I can't read. What is that mean? Edict is like a proclamation. I have seen to the cause of the error. Popcorn Barwin. Uh, I also understand you've acted upon some recommendations of mine, esteemed uncle Edmund, in the matters of garrison upgrades and warship improvements, Popcorn Kelvin. It is with great regret <laughs> that I must advise you to rescind that <laughs> approval. While I respect my good uncle's wisdom in all matters, agreements of this magnitude do require my consent, and I have not granted it in this popcorn buckle. <laughs> Case, when I next visit the Golden Keep during the present 10 day, I shall apprise you of the particulars which shall soon precede me with the trusted emissary, Lila Thane of Donvale, Popcorn Ravelor. What? It's over. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there, uh, there actually is a line that's cut off there at the bottom, uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't make it fit on there. Let me scroll for the the folks on the stream can see it, I think, but I'll scroll for y'all. There you go. Oh, hi, steward of its 
Popcorn <laughs> Adam. Clan and holdings. <laughs> that was amazing. What an experience. <laughs> wow. I think I might was... be in a fugue state. <laughs> um, so I didn't, I didn't uh, pay attention to any of it. Oh, let's sure do it again. Let's sure do it you again. Didn't. To the right. Sure, <laughs> you didn't. Well, I've moved it off the stream. Those of you on stream, I hope you had plenty of time to absorb that. I, I've left it being shared though, so any of you who are in Rollcast can oh, yeah, turn to look at it that. again if you like. Oh, yeah, Lila, it's still there. No. Lila and Baylor's uncle wanted Edicts. upgrades. Um, edicts and upgrades and warship improvements and Lila said no. Okay. Right. So she's a boss, babe. <laughs> so as as you can see, uh, we'll say Bertram was the one who read that last pick and took them into paperback. Yeah. Um, as you can see, there has been some dispute about the nature of some costly improvements ordered to the military garrison for the naval base at Halefoot, uh, which is one of the strongest in the region. Uh, and to some of the warships, some of whom I believe we saw when we were aboard your ship. Um, now, this is in a preliminary stage. The, the letter is dated only five days ago. So it seems that this this letter was intended to undo some measure uh, that was begun by Edmund, who is going to be arriving here. Uh, he is the good Lord Rivers' his father whom we did speak of before. And when Rivers is, and is there as well. And it wasn't sent. This hath not yet been sent, so I think you can understand it is a matter of some urgency that if we are to make sure that Lila's wishes are honored, we do need to ensure it is delivered to Halefoot with all haste. Mm. That oh, is one of are, the first. Where are, where are these edicts? Can I have a look at these edicts? Um, yes, in fact. Um, uh, there were some measures that were promised uh, to be delivered ahead uh, along with this letter. Uh, and he pulls through some sheafs and you can see that there are a sequence of diagrams um, and some, some brief points. Uh, and there's actually a comparison. Uh, there's, um, they're each diagrams of improvements to galleons, uh, so ships of war uh, on a few different sizes. And there is a set that has been um, sort of crossed through uh, and has like in great uh, red inked letters across the top um, denied. Um, and it seems that these were plans that have been uh, sent through uh, or have been approved uh, upon Edmund's request. Um, they include these, um, I guess if you want to take a closer look at it, you can, uh, but it seems like these that have been denied have like a real grandiosity about them. These really um, heavily reinforced bulwarks of ships. Um, and then there's another set uh, that is entirely different uh, in nature and it has not been crossed through. And these you would take to mean uh, are the kind of replacement uh, commands, uh, the actual plans that Lila planned to, uh, to approve of. <laughs> hmm. 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 So... So you're not saying that we have to be mailmen? Uh, no, of course not. We, we, I'm, I'm happy oh, to good. have this couriered, um, although of course we shall be wanting to do so post haste. Uh, it may indeed be the case that uh, I myself need to go to Halefoot to start attending to some things. Um, so I might myself well, we the courier have to be. say goodbye to you. I'm sure that will cause great lamentations on some of your parts. Rab's doing a little dance quietly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Adric puts away his sword. <laughs> um, I think he has one. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rav and Caliban and Avery, I reckon yeah. you three would notice. Oh, actually, um, in this case, I think it makes more sense for Buckle. Um, pretending to read letters on the table in front of you. Uh, while this conversation is going on ahead of you, you can see Vela has kind of um, zoned out and is looking over a different letter very carefully. Um, and she, yeah, she seems to have a kind of really troubled look on her face. Um, and Bertram is going on. Uh, yes, it, it seems in any case that the, 
Edmund, um, his lordship was advocating for these improvements to ships, which seem to uh, improve their fortifications, but render them much more slow, uh, certainly, and heavier, to say the least. Um, while these others... Oh, interesting. As captain of the guard, I must announce <laughs> to the room that Lady Vela appears to be in some form of distress. Perhaps she has received a threat in the letter she is reading. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Vela sort of like puts the letter down and looks... I'm ready to dispatch that letter at a moment's notice, <laughs> as is my duty to this piece. Sir, Sir Buckle, <laughs> please. It is most... Strange, but not a little charming that you do wish to take your place as captain of my guard, and I, I do, I do laud your loyalty. What did you say? Temporarily. Uh, I am in, indeed somewhat perturbed by what I have just read. It is a, of, of a more private nature, I think. Uh, some correspondence that my sister was to have with a man called Master Valentine. I was just attempting to recall the name. It seems somewhat familiar. Can't place it. Seems to be a sort of um, a fortune teller of sorts. I to understand what I read correctly. It's very strange. And I can assure you it is... Well, it is no threat specifically to my person, as far as I can ascertain. Uh, Was it a good for fortune for Lila? I'm afraid I'm rather biased by the most recent turns of events to say it must be Neg. Hmm. I... I don't believe it. Dear Master Valentine, I find myself often considering the matter of our last meeting. You have yourself assured me to grant no great weight to the trifles of your art, Popcorn Caliban. And yet, I have now felt the full gravity of thy cards thrice. The mage you called the Keeper of Secrets, and though I know many in the course of my work, I had no notion of how great a one I should popcorn Avery. Suddenly learn after our reading, the thief you saw inverted, a sign of covetousness in, covetousness in one close to popcorn buckle. Me. In this <laughs> I think you must control thy cards too well, and would think no magic in it, were it not for other proofs. The witch dot 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 popcorn Barwin. <laughs> it is this last card that hath prompted me to write to thee. A lady one and three, sisters of power, betokens the ancient wisdom of the connection in all popcorn Ravelo. Things, you said. But I, oh, I forgot my voice. But I saw you, Master Valentine, the trouble that passed thine eye like a veil as that humble spider skittered across thy yard. The dreams of sisters, dot, 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 you murmured. I, Popcorn Podrig. I may have neglected this correspondence entirely, Master Valentine. Forgive me, were it not for the dream my sister 
Brumilja, Brumilla, Brumia, Brumia, Brumia. If we're in Spain, Brumia, Brumija, Brumija, Brumilla, Brumilla. My sister Brumilla and I <laughs> have each had this night past. Popcorn, Adam. If I close my eyes, I hear her still, calling from behind the very walls. When I return to Hailford, I shall seek you once more at the Red Raven, and hope for some comfort in your wisdom. Or just admonishment of mine inflamed superstition. <laughs> Until then, I remain yours, Al. Will she remain? Will then I remain? Popcorn. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Interesting. Um, Can we go back to the top of the letter? This is some tarot card bullshit. And though I know many in the course of my work, I had no notion how great a one I should suddenly learn after our reading. So a secret. The thief. So something, a sign of covetousness in one close to me. Would that be the uncle? Perhaps. Perhaps. I think. Perhaps. Hmm. And the witch. Well. That's the most boring of all, for we know that mystery. <laughs> what? What? What's the mystery? The Baylor does live. Oh, right, 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 right. Yes, we all knew that. Yeah, yeah. I saw that in edicts. <laughs> mm. I hope it doesn't want close to me. Well, that was interesting. Thank you. Have you got any other things that we can read? <laughs> What's the dying concern, uh, Vela, specifically? Hmm. Oh, Adam, we can't hear you. I can't hear you, Adam. How about... Oh, say something? Now, now, now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I changed a few things because it seemed like I was losing some uh, dream, although not you, a nightmare that we have here too thirsty. Um, so I'm, I'm getting intel from from all the food from the ground. That's whether the voice is coming through now. No, apparently it's not. So what's that? What's that? No, I my don't. my audio is not coming through to the stream. All of the rest no. of yours is fine. I don't. I know. So, but you talk so much. Wait, wait, now, yes. Has it changed? I do talk a lot, too much. Hey. <laughs> like, nope, yeah, okay. So, I think that means it's back. We can always just, um, like, when we speak, just repeat what you say in our, like, response. We can yeah. do it popcorn style. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. we can do that. Popcorn, yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay. So oh, yeah. something has changed for the better and we're back. Um, so Vela... Something has changed for the better and we are back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll leave the letter up there for, for those of you on Rollcast to see uh, if you want to keep perusing it. Um, I'm... Obviously that my sister's dreamed of me by this... This must be within the last 10 day that I cannot help but it is very strange. And to hear me from behind the walls, I, I know not what it means. Um, Barwin, I think being closest, you would notice that Myra kind of goes pale. Mara, what is cross my mind? Oh, it is a very strange thing that you've just said that. I. Um, 
the eve when the ladies were taken ill. Perhaps I should show thee. Um, and she sort of excuses herself past you and walks to the other side of her room across the plush um, kind of royal blue carpet that is bedecked in golden sigils. Um, and on the other side of the sort of fine wood paneled room, the um, the wallpaper on a kind of nook on one, one part of the room has claw marks in it. Um, not like deep gouges of monstrous claws, but like as though fingernails have been run through it. Um, and there's just all of these scratch marks uh, through the fine wallpaper, which is kind of torn away in ribbons at that point. Um, and if you look close, Barwin, you can actually see there's a little bit, um, there's a little bit of blood and like a bit of fingernail sticking out from one of them. Yeah. Uh, on that night- I to test that DNA. It were, it were a horrible thing. All, all of it, you understand, were a horrible thing to see. Mm. But before, I just simply thought me that she had been, that she had lost her wits from the fever. She did scratch the wall again and again, saying, "Here, here, I am here." Lady Vela, I call you Lady now because I am your employee. Do you know to whom the mage and the thief refers to in the letter? Oh, uh, no, I know not. I believe they are figures from a sort of card, um, card magic, fortune telling. Do you, you know, um, some turn cards over and read, read the future or, or past or whatever it is. Uh, have you heard of such, of such things? No, but I... It, it is magic, so everything you just said went over my head. Well, um, it is a sort of fortune telling, and I, I do think me that each of these represented the card from the deck. But more on this side, I have no knowledge of. It is the thing one hears of as being popular at festivals and the like. Well, the most important thing is to keep you, Vela, safe. I believe who would you feel comfortable watching you being with you? Paul raises his hand. <laughs> I I do feel safe with all of you have protected me already. I think as long as you or um, some of your number at least are here, I feel the safer for it. Um Bertram, do you know of this Omira, the the Red Raven? Uh, yes, yes, uh, it is. It is the theater of no no common reputation. One of the finest in the city, I believe. Uh, an indoor place, not one of the uh, not not one of the outdoor kind, which have been more in vogue. Um, it is said to. It is said to be home to many a, a, a great and fantastical display. It is to great acclaim, though not not really to my taste. I cannot speak from first-hand experience to its wares, but uh, there are many who do speak highly of it, including some who are well placed uh, in city affairs. While while we are on the topic of how best to protect you, Lady Vela. Um, I, I, I've been informed of the armor of Brutus downstairs and how it is available. <laughs> ah. Well, are you asking something of me, good sir? Yes, I would like to. I would like to own it and wear it. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Went so well last time. So well last yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 15. <laughs> Vela looks like she's somewhere else for a moment. 
if, if mm. Rutus would like it back, I will happily give it to him. Mr. Buckle, I'm afraid that no one I know has seen Sir Brutus, Captain Brutus, I should have said, in many years. So, Bertram, perhaps this notion is not altogether amiss. Bertram sort of listens and sort of slowly nods his head. It would suggest some continuity and a return to tradition to have someone wearing the golden plate. You must understand, good Sir Buckle, it is... It is an honor of no small esteem to wear that plate. I, I love is... esteem, I love tradition, I love continuity. <laughs> I love that that's the order. <laughs> and you did volunteer your services in a temporary fashion, if that Aye. is what we require, and mayhap to see that and you in it walking along my lady's side would send a message. The heir of Donvale has returned. And, well, Something lost has been found. Buckle is slowly backing away to the door. <laughs> My lady, <laughs> I, I think you are in this not to miss, and if we are to venture to Halefoot, having established ourselves hither, it might be wise to have some ample guardianship accompany thee, and visibly so that those who see you, see you in all of your proper train. I do like this. Um, I am thrilled <laughs> that you like it. Um, very well. Uh, and Vela um, seems to sort of snap back into reality and say, um, Good Marcus, if you would accompany Sir Buckle to have him fitted, uh, and see that he is well appointed with anything else he should need from the armory. Um, and the same goes for any of you hither who have served me so well. There is some way that I can avail you and equip you that shall better your current accoutrement than consider this man of thine. I'll, uh, I'll probably go and have, pardon the pun, a sticky beak. Caliban, you can accompany Marcus uh, and yeah. Buckle if you like. Uh, before I do go, uh, is Worthington something that we need to address? Uh, that is a good reminder. Um, Myra was just telling us something about his whereabouts. Oh, oh yes, uh, I, I see he... He was sent away, uh, I believe, the morning, the very morning, before the evening, when my ladies and my lord were taken ill. Uh, in no great amount of grace, he was sent away. Uh, my lady did raise her voice. <laughs> and you must understand, he was not one to do so. A temperate one, Lila ever was. Uh, Brumilla of the two ever was the one to be more fiery. Um, begging your ladyship's pardon. Worthington was sent away post haste with some message to your uncle, Edmund. I was not acquainted with its confidence. I understand it was written down in some haste. Uh, and that the seal had barely dried before Worthington was sent um, summarily uh, on, on a fast horse. Did you see him, Rivers? Were you with your uncle, or your father, sorry? Hmm. Now that you do mention this, my uncle was in a rather good mood. have become accustomed to my father's moods and what they reflect. 
was not long thereafter he did send me. Although he did task me with acquainting myself uh, with some other necessaries along the way. Soon after we received intelligence of the tragedy, I was dispatched hither to prepare for his arrival. This Worthington, I believe, I have spied, at least uh, a man of the house's livery that I have seen before. He was admitted directly into my father's confidence to deliver a message, something that my father's steward does not generally take kindly to. That is what I know of the matter. Did you know of this man before that day? I'm certain I did see him and others of his like, and I, I did mark his face. I'm certain he hath been sent to my father's house before. Mm. Mm. And in various thinks... sundry times in my visits here, I believe I have seen him about. Mm. And Myra chimes in. Would you say um, he is lo he would be loyal to your father more than than um, the Thane? I'm afraid I do not have any sort of intimate conversation there with, but uh, I understand the bearing of a servant who knows they will be received well when they arrive. And I believe he did have this bear. Mm. Do you know, Myra, of any of the content of what the message in which he uh, delivered? No, I, I do believe that it, like as not, we're on the subject of this misdelivered missive. Uh, it doth seem that the good Lord Rivers' father, Edmund, did uh, either order or intimate that he had the Thane's consent to send these plans through. I should think mm. that this Worthington was perhaps delivering notice of that issue. And so these letters that we have here writ were written after he was sent? Aye, ah, so I do surmise. Uh, I can only... I can only assume that they were intended to be delivered to Haleford on, on that day, or perhaps the next. But mm. on that day, Calamity did strike. Mm. Would it be worth questioning all the staff who had access to Lady Lila? Um, Arwen, you have that spell you used on us on the boat. The zone of truth. Could you not just zone of truth everyone? And we find out who the killer is. <laughs> well, um... And then have an early early night. <laughs> I will happily lend that service if that's what you think will work. I... It's a great uh, suggestion. My I always have an itch that can't be scratched without being shot into um, a body. So. <laughs> Keen for some, some fighting. Well, <laughs> if we find the murderers. Thou may not like mine suggestion for it would be harder to fight, but I don't want to alarm anyone. However, I am suspicious that there may be some paranormal culprit for earlier, I did feel that I was lightly assaulted by a ghost. So keep thy wits about you, friends. Okay. Oh, that is certainly the last thing we need is a haunting alongside a plague. Rumors never cease. And yet, it would be helpful, would it not, Barwin, to be able to speak to the dead? Yes. As we did speak of some time when we were in the crypt. Mayhap um, we could even speak to Lila herself. 
I will need to rest, but that is my intention. Yes. Right, good we night. Have permission, Vela. We've been paid to respect. We would wish to speak with her by magical means. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> oh. Barwin. Right. Is it with advantage because we're all standing behind Barwin? Being if somebody, if somebody is chiming in to meaningfully contribute to this request, then you can roll with advantage, or it can be a split roll. Who has but... the highest persuasion? Oh, it doesn't matter. I think I might. Yeah, yeah, definitely not me. It's also, yeah, matter. I think if... you probably would. I've got pretty high. Either, either or, like then. I would just give you advantage anyway. Anyway, it's just plus good. three. At, at <laughs> this point, it's a role-playing choice. Who's going to say something or do something? That's what will determine it. Mm. I would say it would be in our in your interest, Vela, for who could tell us more of the state, the real state between the lines than Lila herself. Okay. Then, Barwin, yeah, you can roll roll persuasion with advantage. Okay. Would it be better for me to roll? Or Barwin, you can oh, roll once in Caliban. You can because okay. Caliban, you did say something substantive to contribute. So thank you. Yeah. It's kind of a fine line because you could just like do something that contributes to the situation, which I think would afford yeah. that person advantage. But yeah, you made a case. Nice. Okay. Seventeen from Caliban. Whoa, oh, and now 20 from Marwin. Oh, That's two nat ones and a crit today. <laughs> Thank you, Matt Day. Uh, um, okay. Um, Nayla looks shaken by this request. And she's, you can tell Caliban she's listening to what you're saying, but she's just looking at, at Barwin and then sort of like her eyes unfocused for a second. Um, and Myra makes a gesture, Arwen, that you would recognize, um, uh, putting her hand uh, out by her side, like her arm down, and then bringing it slowly to her chest, um, which is a kind of congregational gesture from uh, servants of, uh, of the loving hand. Um, Arwen does it back. Um, and Vela sees this, shakes her head. You may do this, Arwen. I know not if I... I know not if I can bear to be present or if I can bear to be away. What? Will you truly speak to her? Will she... Will she be there, her true self? Yes. I believe that she will. And you can let us know how you are feeling tomorrow, for I understand that you know not what you will feel like then. But trust that I do so with the love and guidance, guidance of the sower. I shall think on it and rest if I can. I, uh, Marcus and Caliban and I will return anon, my lady. Yes. And Buckleberry sort of professionally leaves, and then once the door's closed, he like grabs Marcus by the shoulders. He's like, <laughs> 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 I can't believe it, truly. I can't believe that that, that did work. <laughs> I mean, well, I'll follow, do, do follow me, please. I did think for sure that the, the lady and the lord would say thee nay. It is such storied armor right this way, please. And and yourself, good Caliban, was it? I, I did hear. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Um, he's very positively good. bouncing. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, he looks extremely excited. Um, back in the room, Vela sort of zones out again, shakes her head, and Myra as well does the same. It says, And what wonder to be able to know who says the truth, speak with the dead themselves. I. It is a great gift that I have been given, that is sure. But you must needs, I'm 
take a break of some kind. Well, I've done so much. Sit. I. For a moment. So I believe I shall. And Vela sort of um, is looking at the letter and just sort of staring at her sister's handwriting. Um, kind of running it between her hands. Um, and Myra uh, <clears throat> collects herself uh, and says, well, uh, if we are to be sending an emissary to Halefort, presuming we may our I's here dot and T's here cross, and like as not, we must have this place soon staffed. And as you have all said, we must attend to those who are here with us now. Um, Barwin and, and, and Avery and, and Podrick and Ravalor, art are thou of a disposition to greet our staff? such as are here, and take, if you can, the measure of them with what help we can provide. Yes, let us not waste time. Indeed. Very well. Um, I think perhaps there is a venue of a, a more suitable kind uh, hither, the, the dining room. Uh, there's a grand table there where we can easily fit all who are here present. Uh, we shall call... Uh, thine own acquaintances and the rest of our guards, including good Marcus, when when, when we are there spent. Um, and so they'll stand uh, and sort of process you all down the hallway, which has its plush blue carpet as well. There's a stairwell going up one direction uh, to a sort of uh, half landing, if you will, not a full second story up, a kind of different uh, level of this ground floor. And then straight ahead, there is a grand room, a uh, dining chamber with a um, very fine tiled floor in a, in a huge table uh, surrounded with fine ornate wooden chairs. Uh, there's tapestries hanging along the walls and paintings as well, and tall windows of glass with some stained glass at the top, which sort of casts sunlight, uh, the Western sun, uh, and sort of extend the stained glass so that there's blue and gold colored light uh, hitting the head of the table. Um, meanwhile, uh, Buckle, Caliban, you and Marcus are in the armory, uh, and Marcus is uh, attending to you there, Buckle, like and, and encouraging you to sort of stand mannequin style with your arms outstretched mm -hmm. uh, as he is quickly and efficiently buckling uh, these pieces of plate to you. Um, and you notice right away, Buckle, um, from someone with your practiced eye, you would have been uh, probably realizing a few things uh, as you're sort of coming out of your buzz from the tavern earlier today. Mm -hmm. One of the things you would have realized is that um, this kind of armor is definitely the finest you've ever seen. You remember that. But it's also extremely big. Uh, <laughs> and plate armor is extremely heavy. Uh, extremely heavy. <laughs> Uh, like for like the kinds of folks you would have seen maybe wearing it a few times were like massive soldiers uh, wielding like great swords and mauls and pikes uh, moving with these great clopping steps. Um, you would be expecting to be basically anchored to the ground as these pieces are getting put to you. So these things I'm sure are all going through your mind mm -hmm. uh, as possibilities at this moment. Caliban, uh, Therion has met up with Marcus en route uh, and is now with you in the armory section. Is there something in particular that you are looking for? Uh, that's what I'm wondering. I just want a, a decent, um, either a decent rapier mm -hmm. or a short bow that's maybe a bit better than what I've got. I see. Yep. Yeah. Um, there are a fine array of longbows and shortbows, as well as crossbows of various descriptions. Uh, and there are also a number of longswords and rapiers uh, of various gradations. Most of them are of a common sort, uh, I would say, to your practice eye. Um, but uh, getting a feel for what you're looking for, Therion um, quickly sort of moves past that lot and goes into um, the sort of side closet area uh, that's next to the room where uh, these fine suits of plate are. And on the wall, there are some weapons that are encased. Uh, he begins to take a few down. Um, 
one of which is an extremely uh, ornate and fine looking rapier that bears the sigil uh, of House Don Vale. Um, and there is also uh, a bow uh, of similar, a short bow of similar variety. Um, uh, am I to understand that uh, these are of the kind that you do prefer? Yes, that is Very correct. Well, uh, here, uh, this one, uh, here's a, well, the like of which I've never seen the finer. Uh, not sure what make these strange. Hmm. I did think it were gold leaf, and I think some of it be, but there's something else I don't recognize. There's something carved it in there. Hmm. In any case, uh, perhaps this is to your liking, um, and then he'll hand it to you, and uh, mechanically speaking, uh, this is a plus one short bow. Um, and you'll notice that what he was looking at is it seems that in the beaten gold leaf around the handle, um, there is still a normal kind of fine leather grip, but then in the gold leaf around it, there are uh, some sort of uh, what appears to be kind of arcane runes carved okay. and beaten into it. Um, the rapier uh, is of a similar kind of make and quality, and it, uh, mechanically speaking, is a plus one rapier. Thank you. Buckle. Yes. Uh, something strange is happening. Uh, more and more pieces of this plate are being fastened around you. Uh, this kind of um, epaulettes and, and arm pieces uh, and a, a belt holding up the plates for the legs. Minutes are passing here. Can I say by this stage, I have already instructed Marcus to burn my old armor. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's not in great shape. You've like, you've ripped off your own sigil from it. It's like yeah. patchy and got dents and like, I imagine just like grooves from where the Umber Hulk was just tearing into oh, you yeah. that time. And yeah, various other marks. Um, and that's been taken away summarily. The weird thing is Buckle, this armor is light. Uh, it is not weighing you down. In fact, it's almost like it's almost lighter than your last armor. In fact, the more it's being clipped in, the more it's become apparent. No, it's not just the way that Marcus is holding it. It's not being propped up by anything. There's not going to be a penny drop moment. You've been working out. <laughs> yeah. Pedro, I'd like for you to add to your inventory a set of mithril plate. Ooh. That's M-I-T-H-R-A-L, uh, which mechanically speaking means that you no longer have disadvantage. You would normally have disadvantage on stealth checks with plate armor, but you do not with this. You would also normally have to have a strength score of at least 15 to wear plate armor. You do not. That's Whoa. because of because of how light this is. Um, you can begin to sort of be moving your, your arms to test the flexibility, and it's remarkable. Um, normally, armor like this is extremely restrictive. Uh, you would expect to have kind of limited range of mobility, um, but uh, like practicing with your shield arm, you can see that you have easy range of access. You can even move your arm all the way across your body almost, like not quite fully as you would because there is mass there, but like much further than you expect. And you can move it up and around. Um, yeah, this is this is I very good stuff. Mark, I whispered to Marcus, was Brutus a wizard? <laughs> oh, a great and and noble warrior, as I understand, and one of one of the finest that Don Vale has ever known. But I, I agree, it is it is practically magic. This stuff, wonderful, isn't it? I'm doing like stretches, yeah, with the armor on. And the funny thing is, as you're moving, you don't have that grating sliding sound of metal on metal. Like there's um, there's some fine padding in between, but you would expect still to have some rubbing and there's barely any friction noise. It just moves very, uh, very easily, smoothly. Uh, and he's got you fully set up after a few minutes of very efficient work. Um, does this mean that Buckle can't take off and put on this armor by himself? <laughs> Uh, it does. It does benefit from having assistance. I think okay. you can do it faster when you have someone help you. Right. Uh, otherwise, donning and doffing it does take does take time. Okay. Uh, so you'll have to bear that in mind mm -hmm. for for sleeping and stuff like that. Um. Uh, now then. Uh, well. I see that it doth fit thee well. 
Um, but I think it is missing something. Uh, and then so he, he goes around uh, to the other side of the room, opens another case, uh, and pulls out um, a round shield um, that is uh, the same sort of color pattern as the armor of this strange sort of blue-silver metal, uh, which you now would understand to be mithril. Uh, um, in the middle of it. <laughs> uh, rebounds and comes back. It has uh, it has the sigil of Donvale House emblazoned in the middle, as does the armor on the chest, um, and the line of it is with this is a kind of beaten gold around the outside. But the outside is not just uh, not just a flat uh, sort of circle border, but rather um, uh, loosely beaten flames uh, in very fine craftsmanship of gold leaf round side and layered as such for individual flames. Uh, don't match the set, after all. Uh, he hands it to you. Uh, this will have the uh, mechanical equivalent of a plus one shield. Cool. Marcus, I, I promise to respect thine house while I have this armor on. I... Which will be a long time because I do not wish to take it off. <laughs> in, in thy in thy shoes, I should feel the same. For thy shoes are some of the finest armor ever created that I have seen. Uh, um, I do hope you wear it well, as I am certain you shall. I already do. He blushes a little bit at that. <laughs> um. Is there anything else I can assist thee or thine with uh, while we are here? I... I do believe um, we are to take you back to the dining room uh, when you have found what you do seek. I'm I'm done here. Yeah, I'm also done. Actually, are there any cool arrows? <laughs> uh, um, like special ones. Yeah, like Hawkeye stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Try and get some yeah, incendiary arrows. Incendiary, uh, like flame arrows. Or... Sorry, Adam, was it Please mithril arrows. chain? Was it mithril chain mail that I just got? Mithril plate armor. Plate. The mithril plate, I believe, is what it appears as says in D and D Beyond. Cool. Thank you. Seek it. Um, Are we all in the room? It's just those two, isn't it? So it's just those two in the armory. Um, y'all, y'all have been are being led to the the dining room now, where they're going to meet you, uh, and where some of the staff is being uh, being taken through as well. Uh, Caliban, if you have a look around for a bit with Therion's help, um, he's he's a bit confused by your. Uh, somebody's found it. Uh, somebody's, seen, a... somebody's seen their new AC on D and D Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Yeah. What is it? Twenty-one! Whoa! Oh, Wait, did you say twenty-one? Yeah, that's, that starts with a two. Okay, so buckle, buckle goes in head first, baby. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pedro, Pedro, built, Pedro built that man for a purpose. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Caliban, Therion's a bit confused by your request at first. It's just lots of arrows, you know, and bolts for crossbows, and then. Oh, I. I do believe I understand your request. Uh, a, a moment, uh, and he sort of um, is pulling out some drawers uh, in what is a, a big collection of like daggers and, and various other sort of like. There's stuff for maintaining equipment rather than the equipment itself. Uh, he finds like spare arrowheads and fletching, and he's moving. There's not that, not that, and he picks up um, a a silver tray that has uh, a couple of individual pieces in felt in that are inlaid in felt um and he takes out five of them uh, he says oh these are uh, uh of an interesting sort uh, i believe uh your man bertram might be able to tell thee more uh here uh and he he gives you five sort of um strange inset cylindrical pieces that are made of um gold leaf steel uh, so steel with a kind of golden leaf in, in emerald around it. But inside is a slightly oversized glass vial. 
that each one has. Um, and you can see that the, the glass is like pressing hard against uh, the, the steel. Uh, and there's some, some odd kind of mechanisms, bless you, on either side uh, of those legs uh, of the steel that encase the glass vial. Um, he says, uh, I believe these can be affixed to the tip of your arrows, and you put your head here at the tip, and the arrow hits its mark, crack goeth the glass, whatever you have put inside comes to pass. <laughs> I'm no, I'm no bard. <laughs> no, I, I disagree. That's oh. really poetry. <laughs> oh, oh no, you shall be. My head will be floating right out that there stained glass if you keep that up. <laughs> uh, well then, uh, you take these five. I know they've not had any particular use here. Um, as I said, perhaps your man Bertram could tell you more about what to do with those. Or, uh, oh, thank you. Um, and, uh, uh, if, uh, as we said, uh, it is at your disposal if uh, inspiration doth strike, uh, and we shall outfit you all with anything you like. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Yes, yes. very right. good. Uh, follow me, and then Therion comes in and hasn't seen you yet, Buckle, and when he sees you standing there in like your new shield and that armor, he kind of stops in his tracks. And says, Oh, you forget me how fine that suit is. Buckle, Buckle's doing lunges. <laughs> uh, well then, uh, good sirs, perhaps you will me follow this way. Um, and if the two of you follow, the rest of you who are in the dining room, uh, a number of folk have been led in here now that you've all been settled at the table. Some of the staff that you saw, uh, including some of the other guards who are around, uh, and there's some servants and valets, um, folks who are looking very haggard. Uh, some folks who looks as though they've just been woken up. You can tell they've been doing kind of shifts these last few days, and some of them are kind of in the middle of their sleep uh, cycle. But there's a, like, I would say probably uh, less than two dozen people in the room total. And for an estate of this size, that is, there's not very many people. Um, who are sort of lay, arranged out before you. Uh, and then last of all, you would see Therion and Marcus bring in Caliban, sporting some new gear, and then a positively resplendent buckle uh, <laughs> in this set of armor and shield. Ahoy hoy, buckle says. <laughs> who, is that, who is that dapper soldier? Radiant, literally. Rav gets very jealous immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Why, I think him not so handsome. Whoa, look at the way he lunges. <laughs> yeah, he's lunging up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I bet even you could not do that, Rav. That is amazing. Oh. oh, and I know not why you would say such a hurtful thing. Oh, I'm sorry, the word just came out of my mouth. It's yum. I, I flip open, I guess there's like a thing, like a visor. Where yeah, you got a helmet face. with a visor. Friends, tis only me, but I agree with everything thou, thou, thou art saying. <laughs> Rabalor, have you seen Buckle? Isn't he just the most dashing, most handsome soldier you've ever seen? I, the most handsome soldier, mayhaps, but I care not for the soldiery types, for I am a man of music and art. Did I just I shrug I... and say, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> well, Avery, if we were not so recently broken up, I would take offense, but thou art paining from the absence of me. Many have been known to go into withdrawals, so fare thee <laughs> well that thou wilt not fall into some kind of illness. <laughs> I shall not fall to any illness because I wear a mask. <laughs> I then I should not be so sure. Uh, uh, I must admit, I am uh, nervous somewhat to speak to such a large crowd. And as you are uh, so practiced in such a skill, dost thou think thou couldst address them for, for me? 
Are they talking to me? <laughs> yes, <Rebel. laughs> Sorry, I was blowing my nose in the early parts of that address. <laughs> I do think I got its gist, and wherever <laughs> there is an audience in need of a performer, I shall be there to assist. Wait a second, did you just see that Ravalor had to blow his nose? Mayhaps he has caught a, uh, an airborne virus because he has refused to wear a mask across his face. Oh, you mean I refuse to be dominated by daddy rules? Which is lucky to get no virus as the reason we are here. I would have thought you would have enjoyed being dominated by daddy rules, Ravalor. We <laughs> have only like the mask of the leather variety. <laughs> no, nay, I enjoy not being dominated by daddy rules. I enjoy only being consensually manhandled by mother manners. <laughs> but fine, I <laughs> shall. There is a room full of people just staring. Art thou completely across the message that we are here to deliver, Ravalo? I and if not, I shall improvise. Let me at them. <laughs> um, a moment, please. Uh, and uh, I imagine that that whole exchange was like mostly muffled on that side of the room and then just Rav's big declarations booming through, <laughs> dominated by daddy rules. <laughs> um, uh, Vela stands up uh, and when she does so, um, everyone who is uh, who has come in and stands over, uh, looks over for a moment. And when Vela does, um, Rivers uh, bows his head uh, for a moment, and then all of the the people who are standing over there who have been there uh, fall to a knee. Um, and then when they rise again, uh, they keep their heads down. And Rav mutters, why is everyone here doing lunges constantly? <laughs> uh, Vela walks over to you, Buckle, um, and uh, he then looks to you, uh, Caliban, and says, Good Caliban, may I have the use of that fine sword for one moment? Which one? Spring. Uh, yes, I do have two. That's true. And then, uh, uh, she'll um, oh, she'll reach yeah. out a hand and take the handle of the, the, uh, the rapier, which bears the sigil of House Don Vale. Uh, and she'll say, Utsu Buckle, please, kneel. I kneel. Um, I kneel. April, I kneel. Kneel. Um, Vela, uh, looks up and then picks up uh, the rapier before her and says, in the name of my house, and all who to its name do owe the vigor of their vital flame, I hear thee dub Sir Buckle, captain of my guard. Long may you serve and well earn that fame. Big deal. <laughs> And then uh, the the people who are who are waiting and Lord Rivers uh, all respond in a kind of um, refrain. Uh, Long may he serve, like as though they expected those terms that word to come. Uh, uh, Buckle Buckle would like to refute the 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 word long in that statement, <laughs> but he's he knows it's not his turn to speak right now. Yeah. Um, rise, Captain Buckle. I rise. She turns uh, to address everyone uh, and says, I greet you all, keepers of the house of Donvale. For so you have been in my long absence. Some of you may know me and some perhaps have forgot. I am Lady Vela, heir to the house and clan of Donvale and all its holdings. 
At the death of my sister, Lila. At the death of my sister, Brumilla. Thane and under Thane. And the death of my good father, Martin. All other sundry heirs having fallen, I have come to reclaim my place. Now is your chance to affirm that you still serve the Donville name. And indeed, are prepared to regard me as your thane. And then she pauses and looks and rivers stands, and then kneels and says, I, Rivers of House Donvale, do here expect and respect your claim. I honor you, lady, as my thane. And as he does that, bit by bit, group by group, the servants and guards and others in the room begin to do the same. They drop back to a knee. There are a few who are sort of looking around nervous, and then they do the same. Out of curiosity, those of you who are standing by and watching, what do you do? Can I make a, like, perception check to see if anyone's acting super suspicious in the crowd? Yeah, make a- this would be an insight check. You're reading body language and seeing kind of what the vibe is, as it were. Cool. Um, I, using Calo- uh, sorry, River's voice, will say, like, exactly what he said, except replace where he said rivers with Caliban. <laughs> so it's like his voice and then when he he said Caliban once. So it's kind of it's a bit off. But it's yeah, it's, yeah. It's disquieting, I'm sure. Hmm. Uh Rivers sort of uh, cocks his eye and looks at you but keeps his composure. Avery, from your position uh, you do notice that there's a few who go, who drop to their knees slower. Um, it's hard to separate anything off from just the general air of confusion and, uh, mm -hmm. and surprise in the room. This is like, um, I mean, this is probably one of the single most momentous things most of these people have heard. Um, and they're just kind of like taking it in. So it's hard to get much more specific read than that. Um, what are the rest of you doing? I mean, yeah. ceremony. I'm just there watching the ceremony. Mm -hmm. in. Rav is facing the opposite direction. Funny, that's not happening. <laughs> okay. Um, Buckle standing beside Vela. Mm -hmm. Bowen would join next to Kellerman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I thank you all. Rise. Please, citizens of Donvale, know that I do rely upon your steadfast loyalty, upon your wisdom, and your commitment to my family's house, my family's name, and to the land on which we stand. These are trying times. And I have, for the purpose, returned to you today from what all, including for a time myself, believed mine own death. And I have a greater tale to tell. It's another time. For now, I will introduce to you some great personages who have, through their loyalty and fearsome might of arm, and cunning craft brought to me free of harm this day here to be your thing. They have protected me at great risk to themselves and they have and will continue to act on my behalf. You shall respect them and honor their word 
as long as they do me honorably serve. Their voice, my voice, their hand, my hand. They shall here assist me this day to be sure that you feel safe and also to ensure that all of thee can be trusted to carry out the duties you swore here today. And so I say, before we begin that process of reigniting the flames that were so untimely snuffed, any of you who would not continue your service here in my house, I bid thee, with haste and without my judgment, depart with what is thine. I whisper in Vela's ear, perhaps we should we should catalogue the people who wish to leave mm -hmm. in case it is valuable to us. I'll keep a very close eye on what mm -hmm. comes next. There is silence. No movement. Well, an excellent well. Now, I have many affairs to attend to, which I'm sure you can imagine. And I shall to attend them. With this at my side, the good Bertram, who shall be serving me as a most trusted aid, and here with the good Myra, whom you know as your steward, who shall continue in this capacity. She shall remain with thee, and these my most trusted allies. I shall leave them in thine hands, Myra, and thine. Please do call for me, as is required. I shall, in my study, there retire. She bows, uh, and then everyone in the room kind of bows and keeps their heads low until she uh, makes it out of the room with Bertram and one of the oh, guards. Oh, my sword! A sword! And she'll return it. She'll return it to you. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thought she was gonna do a runner. Um, <laughs> Actually, Caliban, you oh. notice um, she sort of, uh, she kind of allows a bit of a, a blush and like shakes her head as she hands you the sword. She looks like tense. Like she is just, she, like she's barely let out of breath now and sort of like, oh, and then continues onward out uh, and Rivers, Rivers goes with her uh, and Bertram. And then, yeah, Myra uh, sort of stands up and says, Well, now, uh, <clears throat> I expect all of you to cooperate. You have had your opportunity to depart. I shall reiterate it once more. You were feared to do so in the lady's presence, I understand. I know you. And though I do trust in your goodwill, I must repeat if you do not wish to continue in service here, you must now depart. And any sign of infidelity to the lady that we do here discover shall be answerable with thy service, and if true treachery here is discovered, with thy life. Once more silence. The people are looking at each other a bit wide-eyed. Looking a, bit, looking a bit spooked. <laughs> uh, a few people actually start audibly at that. Uh, and, and Myra says, ah, that I believe is the first thing we must address. And I shall admit thee now to the good care of a vaunted member and servant to the loving hand, good Barwin, the cleric of the sower. And it is now nine o'clock on the dot I think this would be a good time for us to put a pin in it for a moment. We will take a 15 minute break. Uh, so to those of us who are watching on stream, thank you for joining us. Uh, and we encourage you to stand up, have a stretch, make yourself some tea. Uh, we will return anon for a bit more Shakespeare inspired D&D. See you at 9.15. Welcome back everyone to Bardic Inspiration, Dungeons and Dragons in Shakespearean style. Uh, this is a timely reminder to uh, send a nice message to a Melbourneian or Sydney cider that you know. You know them because 
this has been the the, the longest uh, 200 day long day I think most of us have <laughs> have ever lived through. Mm -hmm. uh, so thanks for that. Uh, we are picking back up where we left off with the Headless Marys having debunked a plague. Uh, how refreshing. Uh, but instead <laughs> found out that it was murder most foul. Um, you have in front of you, Headless Marys, a, uh, a ragtag group of staff who are who have just witnessed uh, the Lady Vela's swearing in, as it were, as the Lady of the House, uh, her acknowledgement by Rivers, um, and uh, her swearing in of a new Captain of the Guards in Buckle, Captain Buckle. Uh, yeah, yeah. who is nicely kitted out with some new yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, Myra was just finishing introducing uh, Barwin uh, as a cleric of the Sower. Um, and she goes on to say, now these fine folk have performed some investigations of our dearly departed mistress and also those we lost. Our dear Jonathan and Amelia. And they have some some small comforts to offer us and to allay some of the fears that we have. Um, but I shall turn you over to their good hands. Um, good Barwin. Um, Barwin is a bit pale and is mm -hmm. she's never spoken to probably more than like Really not this number of people, and she's surprised yeah. whenever she is. Um, I thank the uh, Myra, uh, as, as you have said, I am a cleric of the sower, studied in uh, medicine and magic, and um, we have done uh, some investigations, as thou hast said, and I can reassure you that uh, this is no plague, no um, disease. Nothing that thou canst catch uh, from air or contact. Um, here, here. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, there is. Strange. There is like a titter through the crowd at that point. People are like turning, sort of like some people looking like clearly a kind of excitedly, and some people kind of looking at each other across the room. Like, yeah, there seems to be a mix, a mix of reactions. But you're getting a reaction from that for sure. Audrey looks to bow when he goes. What? Doing great. <laughs> and, and I am here if thou needs me to fill in. Um, uh, uh, perhaps, perhaps Ravalor, you could um, uh, say some more words to reassure and convince our audience of this. Indeed. Rav pushes Barwin inside. <laughs> 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 thou hast heard, I am sure, the lies about this plague, so-called. I shall tell you, tis nothing at all. Why, air and droplets poisoning us? Hast thou ever heard of such a silly thing? Why, tis a conspiracy. Indeed it is, and they would have us cover our faces in shame, they would. Nay, not I, for I shall show my face proudly, for I am afeard of no manufactured plague, twas murder. Go on, Barwin. It's a gasp, it's gasps from the room at that. And then, and then I'm like more kind of titters back and forth. Like some people like trying to shush each other and some people are like, no, murder, she said murder, I told you. Uh, like, I'm keeping out. an eye out for interesting facial expressions uh, insightfully. Okay, uh, Caliban, make an insight check. Um, Buckle, when you like smack the ground for a bit, you do notice that seems to have an effect for a moment. And also a couple of the guards that are there sort of take a step forward on your mark. The room quiets. Audrey looks to Ravalor and goes, Thou art doing great. <laughs> I have notes, but thou art doing great. Thou art doing great as well. If thou needs me to step in and reassure people for thee, I shall. Now, someone was about to say something, either Barwin or Rav. It was Barwin. Um, uh, to, to, to that end, I, um, I will be casting a spell now. <gasps> that will require of you all to speak the God's honest truth. 
and I will be doing so in asking you all a question. And you will need to answer one at a time, verbally. Do you know anything that would help us find out the true nature of the plot that killed Lila? And Bowen climbs off the stage, walks into the middle of the room, and she starts casting zone of truth. So the way that uh, the way that procedurally we can we can do this is that uh, this is a a spell that lasts for ten minutes, um, and it is a zone that basically any creature who enters that area for the first time has to make the save, uh, and then they um, they they speak uh, how they will. Uh, now, because there's quite a few people, um, I would love for y'all to, as a group, uh, you can, and Barwin, you're kind of facilitating this this moment. How would you um, how would you organize this? So you're, you're progressing him through, and then if you're going to do the same thing with each person, uh, it can allow me on my end to sort of make a couple of roles that are representative, I think, of of groups, uh, and then based on those outcomes you will get certain kinds of responses. Um, mm. but you need to tell me, um, what, you said you're going to have them come through one at a time. What's the kind of question that you're asking? The question is, do you have any information um, about the plot to kill Lila? Flash, mm -hmm. do you think Rav is hot? <laughs> um, how long does the spell last? Flash, how long? Ten, Ten minutes, minutes long. <laughs> or we could even divide up the room and each, one each person just gets a yes or no from everybody. And if they don't answer, or if they answer yes, then we take them to another room and we talk. There's six of us, and Adam said there's <clears throat> two dozen people, so that would be four people each. Yeah. Oh, that's not as many as I thought. Easy. Yeah. Mm. And also, yeah. the only person that knows whether the spell is successful or not is you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Barwin, you also know that people can voluntarily allow it to happen. This also means that we have to speak the truth as well. If you oh, go yeah, into the circle. Fair. So it's a circle that is 15 foot radius, or sphere rather. Yeah. Interesting oh. detail. Oh, I can cast it from 60 feet away. Is that why? Is that... Yes, yes. Cool. So well, 15 foot radius is big. Right? That's that's like that's like a close to a 10 meter diameter circle. So it's not small. What does it look like when Barwin casts Zone of Truth in this room? What are these people seeing? Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, Barwin is, uh, she walks in the middle, she puts her hand on the pendant at the, the charm at the front of her breastplate, and she, uh, she kind of like looks out and her eyes glaze over, and she says, um, uh, why so is Will speak the truth? Uh, or else, uh, and by such means, we shall um, avoid some ill. And then, I hope you write that down. Uh, um, <laughs> Everyone uh, does it. The the area that you have designated is now enchanted by the will of the sower, um, and any who enter it have to make a saving throw. Uh, so. Now that that's happening, you have that one area. So splitting them up, as you were saying before, is not necessarily gonna gonna work for you unless you have a specific plan regarding that. So how are y'all gonna manage this now that you have the circle there? Um, maybe we will just pick four. So I'll go up to four people like you, 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 and uh, and you come here. Okay. Yeah. Rav picks the four most attractive people in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can't question us, Rav. <laughs> um, <laughs> Buckle will take Marcus and the other three guards. I believe there's only four of them, right? Yeah, in in the room uh, at the moment. Uh, yeah, so we're in that small number up at a time. We come up and I'm asking the question. Yep, yeah. Okay. Yes, so four. then. We can yeah. ask them several questions in ten minutes. Yeah, Four you've got people. you've got time. You can so we can we can actually move move group by group if we wanted to. Um, so Barwin, you've got four four folks in front of you. Um, um, they. What is your what's your save DC? Um, it's sixteen. Okay. Yeah, they they fail anyway. Um, 
again, you can tell them that they can just allow this to happen, and you'll know if they're if they're honest about that. Um, they they must speak the truth, uh, and when you when you ask them, uh, kind of each in turn. Uh, um, no, I uh, can't say that I do. Uh, they and then they go on to say like, oh, it's just awful, awful thing. Um, each of them seems uh, seems to have no uh, kind of. They answer truthfully that they don't know anything about the plot to kill them. Um, you, can, then, you can ask them more questions if you like. Uh, do you have any ill will, Vela? Oh, oh, I, I, I knew not even that the lady were alive. Oh, she were, she were a kind child, if memory serveth. I, I have no ill will toward her. I, I did mourn her passing. And you get other answers of a kind of similar vein, although two of your group didn't know her because they came on later. Um, I thank the all for hmm. giving me this grace. Okay. Um, Avery, over to yeah. your group. Um, what questions do you choose to ask your group? So I've, I've got my daggers out of my... <laughs> and I'm like doing that thing that Electra does where she just like spins her <laughs> daggers around in her hand and I'm just like pacing up and down building suspense <laughs> and then I lunge at someone and I hold it right up to their face <laughs> did you kill Layla <laughs> Lila no uh, no no but I, I didn't I swear it by the by the sower's hand, I, by the by the lo loving hand, the so, so seats. Bless us. Please don't hurt me. Okay, now I'm gonna go like this to the other two people. What? <laughs> Did I do you kill Lila? Or know of any plot to harm her? No. No, 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 cert certainly not. I, I promise you, no, uh, no, 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 nay. I, I promise thee, I have, I've known of no such thing. I haven't. Oh, there is, there is. Oh, suppose I have to say it. Well, there was. Well, there was Jennifer who, who did pinch some of the silver when she did leave. Once the word of plague did come, I'm sorry. Uh... I'm sorry. I did promise her I wouldn't tell. Bring Jennifer in. <laughs> Jennifer or Yennefer? Jennifer. Jennifer. Please don't hurt been, me. It would have been humorous if her name was Yennefer and she stole money. Is all. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, okay, now I'm gonna like feel like a back spring <laughs> and uh and then i'm gonna like yeah after i back spring around i'm gonna hold my like karate chop up to the last person's throat and? huh karate chop and yes what, what did i say <laughs> yeah, karate chop. that's great did you hurt lila or anyone in this place and you know of any details of the plot to do so? I, I, I did not hurt the lady, Lila. Nor, nor any. Speak. I did hurt someone in this place, but not her ladyship, nor neither of her ladyships, nor his lordship. Another who is here just across the circle behind. I I did get with child and did last night say that I would not own to be in the father of it. Kill him. <laughs> Sorry. 
steal a name or anything. Gossip, gossip, gossip. That's a real dick move. <laughs> Which is so tasty. I'll undo it. I'll, I, I promise you, I'll, I'll, I'll stay. I will hold you to that promise. I will hold you to it. And you've seen my moves. So I have. My lady. Right. Well, you four may go. Uh, he basically collapses into a puddle. <laughs> uh, okay, Padrig. You've got your four. Gentle Magido. <laughs> I know that I may seem as though I'm management, but man, I'm one of the beasts. I'm one of the players. I'm one of the. What are you? you know, we're still bros. We still playing. So let's not like let's not have to be an official thing, you know? We're just hanging, chit chatting. But I got a job to do. You got a job to do. Let's just get this over with and just talk smack like we always do. D Bone, tell me what's up. Do you know anything about the plot? Come hither, give me a whisper, my man. D-Bone, give me knuckles. Yeah, you wouldn't have done nothing. Tell me, tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. It's just, just Brosef to Brosef. <laughs> I will tell thee what I know. I must be certain I understand for you have phrased the question strangely to my ears but i know not i know not if it is right to say but i it do is think all, it is always right man because if being honest is right then i don't want to be wrong no we still, we still hang. After this, we'll go get some frozen yogurt. Let's do it. You have to be true for Patrick to get frozen. <laughs> yeah, I completely intend to get frozen yogurt. If you're standing in the area, <laughs> how well is Patrick acquainted with the border of this circle? <laughs> I know a great place back in, back in my village. <laughs> Speak. Hey, um, you need a shoulder? Shoulder? There, there, there are several, there are several here who are new to our number. And um, the person you've decided is D-Bone <laughs> uh, looks uh, over to a couple of the folks uh, who are with Rav, uh, and then um, a couple of the folks who are with Caliban, sort of looks over to both those groups and says, "Some there are among those two lots whom I know not well, but I have seen them off gathering to speak. I know not what." I suspicious grouping. I see. Does thou know their names? You can tell I, me. You can tell me. I, I, there, there be uh, Jeremy. Jeremy. Yeah. Oh, not Jezza. <laughs> there be. There be. There be Lana. Ah. Oh. Al, Lana the Llama. Ah, oh, Jonas. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we have history. <laughs> oh, there'd be Bryson. Oh, Bryson. Always suspected B Rice. Uh, and, and there'd be Torrance. Yeah. With a name like Torrance. There's always <laughs> trouble. Thanks, D Bone. Thanks. That wasn't so hard. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry. They will never know it's you. I know snitches get itches, but let's not be rash about this. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. 
Don't worry, I'll keep some lemon oil. For if you do get itchy, you just take some of that. A little rubby rub, rubber dub dub on the old itchy spot. And just no take it. it. Just take it. <laughs> I think uh, Padraig's going. Yeah. <laughs> you get inspiration, get okay? It's you get it. <laughs> Juiced it out of my soul. <laughs> and happy late birthday, John Mark. Yeah. <laughs> no! <laughs> um, Hey, all right. Do I have to do this to the other three as well? Um, you'll. This will be the juiciest bit of gossip you get from him. The other, the others, the others seem uh, befuddled and deep, deep home, as you've called him. This Thanks. magic will not, will not bes befuddle my mind, will it? Nay, nay, nay. There'll be no befuddlement. The only magic that's here right now is between you and me. Take it easy, my squeezy. And then I slap him on the butt and tell him, you oh, know. <laughs> And then I and then I like creep over to Rav and who else was it? Taliban's group. Taliban, yeah. Yeah. And I say to those ones, check it uh, just be uh, be a little suspicious of Llama. Llama, um who was the first B Rice? Um and uh, who was the first one again? Jeremy. Jeremy, Jeremy yeah, Jezza, B Rice, Llama, especially Torrance. Patrick, I am in the middle of a vocal warm-up. <laughs> 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 my friend, take it easy, my squeezy, and then I slap <laughs> Ram. <laughs> my squeezy, what? We're just, I'm just one of the, just one of you, right? I'm, I'm not. Yeah, just hasn't gone to my head, and then I go into the staff room. <laughs> uh, middle management Podrick is the highest challenge rating monster we face yet. <laughs> Yeah. If this be his truth, I think we should not cast it in his <laughs> Yeah, never cast this spell again, yeah. Yeah, because Bonnie wasn't there last time we cast this. That's true. <laughs> oh my god, he was below Dex. Okay, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll, as Podrick wanders off, we'll pop over to Rav. What are you doing with your, your most attractive lot that you have selected? Um, Rav is running them through some improv warm-ups. <laughs> oh my god, 10 for 10? <laughs> that, that he learned uh, with his actor feet, so... Um, to the word association, you see? Follow my lead, here we go. Click, everybody click. <laughs> Murder. Murder. <laughs> Oh. Murder, murder. <laughs> Nay, oh, now it's Mr. I do say it. I say it at the same time. Nay, I say a word, then thou sayst my word, and then another word. Another word. Indeed. That's this be I part understand. of this be part of the magic, and then one of the four leans over and, and touches. Tis all right, tis all right. I messed it up at the first as well, but thou might say something like, "Murder, kill." Murder, what dost thou kill, think of when thou thinks of murder? Ah. Dost thou understand now? Thou must be truthful on this. Oh. We shall try another one, a simpler <laughs> one. Uh, Rav walks into the middle of all four of them. Indeed, I am a tree. <laughs> Rav, make a charisma saving throw before you say those words. <laughs> you might literally not be able to say them. <laughs> this game's not gonna go very well. <laughs> Rav has yet to fail one of these. Rav has passed every zone of truth charisma save. <laughs> That is true. That's how he's been able to keep his actual penis size a secret. <laughs> Wait, I can't, I'm missing my. Where's my character sheet? This this show is three niches in one right now. <laughs> Just all of our Venn diagrams converge. <laughs> converge, it's converge. <laughs> and what's Buckle's armor class? Twenty-one. Oh, no. Okay. How do they do it? Uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm here. I somehow lost it. Oh, okay, it's plus eight. Here we go. 
be why you keep succeeding on these. Or because I'm very charismatic. Oh. 23, that's a success. You are oh. a tree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a... Now is when thou must walk forward and be a bird or a leaf or a man pissing upon a tree. Come now, I did explain the rules to the So you're really, you're really keen one walks up and then like takes a posture of, uh, of something grabbing on to one of your tree branches and then opens her mouth to speak and goes, I am a... <laughs> Good, this was a test. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, I was checking that thou wert under the spell what did thou say thy name was? Oh, why, it, it, tis, tis Lana. Indeed. And Lana? I. Keeping in mind that thou art under the spell of truth, art thou physically attracted to me? <laughs> <laughs> tis essential as a baseline truth question. This is a very invasive question. Indeed it is. <laughs> it could be <laughs> i i must say i began as such and became less so when you did say that hmm. oh. interesting interesting he undoes his top button what about now <laughs> 10 minutes 10 minutes <laughs> you, you, you are an attractive person and uh, also perhaps one who Sayeth too much. Ah, so thou art well under the spell. Good. Did ye do any murders or such nefarious things? Nay, I, I, I did no murders. Hmm. Dost thou have any information on any murders that didst happen in this region? I did see no murders in this region. Oh. <laughs> Ravan does the fourth button on his shirt. <laughs> Art thou a tree? Nay, I am no tree. <laughs> Art thou being entirely forthcoming with me? in terms of murder-related information. Nay. But dost thou know, Lana, thou must tell us, for we are here to right some wrongs. And he does the fifth button. Jeremy. And then Jeremy sort of like stands forward and, and touches the back of her arm and says, uh, I, I see not any way we, we may un, unsay or say around. I can be no tree neither. Lana looks at you and says, um, we, we were hither sent by our master to watch, to listen, to, to, to learn the things a servant doth learn of a great house, and to give such notice of it back so that he could know it. And who be thy master? I'm very feared to say it. For thou might do me harm, and, and so might he. Well, of whom art thou more afeard? Keep in mind, I have shown thee only a tenth of mine improv warm-up knowledge. Oh. 
I thought you were gonna say only a tenth of my chest. <laughs> no. It just keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> Thou wouldst tell me, or I shall introduce thee to a truly torturous thing called Bunny Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like not the sound of that. Do not let him suggest. Subject us to that, Lana. Speak truth. I will. Thou must speak plainly then, Jeremy, for Lana wishes to be a bunny. Nay, she doth not. She is no bunny. She is Lana. And I am Jeremy. And I am no tree. And I were a servant of Edmund of House Darnvale. I suspected as much. And hast thou had a hand in this murder here? Nay, nay, nor, nor, nor good Lana. We, we knew not that it would be for such malfeasance, but we knew it were for no good, but we did uncover to some agents of our master that there are some passages underwise the floors here. Mm. of long standing for storage and secrecy. Such great houses often have such like. And he did. So I hear. Take that intelligence. With great gladness. Thou hast done well to tell me such things. Wrestler for treason. This one's called Bad Rap. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> you only got a, you got like two minutes tops. There's no chance. <laughs> um, over to Caliban uh, and Buckle, who are our last two remaining ones, right? Okay. Um, let's uh, let's do Buckle. You've got the guards. Okay. Um, what are you doing with your your with your folks? Um, I have. Three questions for these. No, four questions. First question, did either of these do it? So are you pointing at the other guards? I'm just, I'm, I'm talking to all four of them. Okay, and you're saying, did any of the other guards do it? No, did any of the four of you do it? Okay. Um, so one at a time, they'll each, uh, up to you and say, no. Second question, do either of you know who did it? By it, um, Marcus will lean forward and say, by, by it you mean the murder of Our Lady, yes? Aye. Nay. And, th and these rumors of a plague when there is no plague. Ah, well. Those, those did begin when, uh, when the bodies were seen in the state that they are in. Those who are attending the bodies, my lady, did bring report of it. One of those who attended her is, is also fallen of it. She fell not long after my lady. What is her and name? This, um, Emilia. She did fall soon thereafter, and that that did stoke the fears that it were a contagion, for it would betoken such a thing for her to fall ill some time after treating the lady. But then when she did fall, this were when the grand exodus did begin, and many began to flee. I have forgotten my third question, so I will skip to my fourth question. What, what dost thou, what dost uh, any of you, how did, how did all of you feel about my predecessor, the previous captain of the guard? <laughs> um, uh... Truth be told, uh, Therion speaks up. Um, while we've had management of sorts, the role of captain has not been the same that it once were. 
No one hath worn that armor that you do wear now for nigh on twenty year. And we have always had a senior guard of sorts. Uh, Why that role uh, hath of late uh, been to good Oswald, who not but a month hence did retire his role. And we were to have the choice of the next or all this transpired. You have filled that void. Hi, and, and when I depart, uh, I presume one of you will take over whoever is most worthy. So, um, so am I right in thinking that Oswald didn't flee during the fake plague? He left long before that. Oh, I, uh, he, he did uh, retire to a, an house in the countryside. He did purchase with himself uh, the, the findings. I, I did hear me that he hath got himself interested in some sort of vineyard venture. I, I can't say I've been to visit as of yet. Very well. That I, I can't remember that fourth question. Darn. So that it concludes will. my questioning. I have woke up today, I'm sure. Is there anything else thou wouldst like to tell me about this situation? Marcus says, uh, I'm very glad to have some semblance of order again. It has been a fearful week. And it has been a long time since I have felt any order in my life. I am as glad as you are. We have you to thank and your friends, of course. Oh, ben. what's been going on for you? How have you? How are you spending your time with your four? So I start off by actually turning my seat away from <laughs> from them, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I make the sound of like um, like steam escaping as I take off my plague mask, like, like you know. You know how, uh, like, so, Darth Vader's helmet, yeah, like, yeah. So yeah, I'm turning around on... <laughs> and then I turn around slowly and pick up a carrot and put it in my beak and say, so we're going to start off by telling a lie. So tell me something that would obviously be a lie just to test the waters. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Rav tried this technique. They were not <laughs> true. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, the four of them in front of you um, uh, sort of look at each other and say, and one of them goes, uh, the sky is well, the sky most certainly be good next. <laughs> uh, my name is Bryson, and uh, I am five foot five foot. <laughs> okay, good next. I'm the way of life of being taller than me. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, my, my, my name is Smith. My name is, I cannot say it. My actual name is Torrance. I cannot say the name that is alive. Oh, good. And um, is, is that it? And there's one more. Ah, um, oh, you. You... You do not have a... <laughs> you do not have a... B <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Excuse you. <laughs> Very well. Let's do business, my friends. Now, I hear tell that some of you may be spies. Put your hand up if you're a spy. <laughs> None of them put their hands up. Ah, tell me if you're a spy. Nobody says anything. Are any of you here have having of any knowledge regarding the death of the ladies and the master? Um, no, 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 bless us. No, I have shed many a tear for it. Um, um, no, 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 I know nothing of the kind. I did think me it were plague. The other two are silent. Which two? Bryson and Torrance. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to dismiss the other two and just take out my rapier and say, look, the thing is, this spell only works if you're telling me things. So if you're not going to tell me things, then I have no use for you, honestly. And I only tell the truth. See? So if you don't tell me what I want to know, then this is your last day here. Here. Okay. That was craftily worded. Out of Okay. Make a first make an intimidation check with advantage, because you have set this the hell up. Please, dice, don't fail me now, Matt Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. 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 Hey, look at that. <laughs> That's the 20, the 20 oh and the 1. Oh what a day. <laughs> what a day. A Matt Day. A Matt Day, a Matt day for some oh, Matt 1s and Matt 20s. Was Matt that with 20s. advantage or disadvantage? That was with advantage. Oh, the, the, crit, the crit hits in this case. Um, no. Taliban. 26. 26. Okay. From the moment you created that hissing sound and removed your mask, you can practically smell the fear off of them, all of them. The other two were surprised and afraid and taken aback, but these two have just been fearfully silent the whole, whenever they haven't had to speak. Um, Bryson looks at your rapier and takes in a breath as though about to try to say something and then Torrance bursts into tears um, and drops Torrance to his knees. Indeed, drops to his, drops to his knees uh, and puts up his hands and says, please, please, I can't, I can't take it. I can't take more of it. If it weren't you, it would be him, please. We've done some wrong. I own it. I own it. We were, we were not here under honest means. We did ourselves. Here, listen, whenever we could, I tried to take some notice of her ladyship's affairs. And we did, under guise of servants who are unlettered, offer to take posts when this were disassembly, and we indeed are tutored in such arts. We would take word, the one who would take word to our first master, who be Edmund of Alstone Vale. Do you know who killed the lady? 
I, I do not know who. Do you know who is responsible for the death of Our Lady? There be rumors, of course. I cannot say for certain. Well, a moment ago, the rumors were all plague. What other rumors could there have been? Unless you already knew that it wasn't plague. Boy. I do believe it were an east wind that blown. Blood red like the sun rising. It is what they say. When one of those assassins doth strike. And do you know who employed said assassin? I do not know. I do suspect. I can only think reason, suspicion. Upon my old master's head should lie. Mm -hmm. Please, <laughs> please, <laughs> dispatch me not. <laughs> me nor mine. How about you, Bryson? <laughs> Dost thou have anything to say? <clears throat> Mayhap you can tell me about this gentleman Worthington. Was he too in Edmund's employ? Aye, so he was. And went between them oft. He were our emissary hither and did instruct us when we did here did arrive. Are you expecting him to come back anytime soon? I do think he shall return with our old master. Hmm. When he does come here to lay claim to this place. Aye. Do you think this is a just claim? I never saw that lady called Vader before in my life. I have none but others' word to say she is who she says she be. I took good coin to pass on word of what I did here. Hmm. I hope you had time to spend it, because <laughs> you will shortly be in a dungeon. I know not the affairs of greater sorts. Mm. I only do try to stay alive. But I think that may be forfeit now. Mayhap, yeah. Very well, I think our conversation is over, Bryson. Torrance, thank you. <laughs> uh, stay here. For a while. I believe these guards will want to speak to you in a moment. Um, they will have finished they speaking have... with Buckle. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they had <laughs> different uh, accommodation for you would be suitable. Buckle, you have had time to finish up your, your speech at this point, and the guards will come over uh, and, and take those two. Uh, Put them in irons uh out of curiosity what's going on in your group rev are they <laughs> you have the other two uh look i'm trying to think of another improv one but it's been a while <laughs> to do run 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 to do run do run run do run 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 to do run run well didst thou enjoy thine selves <laughs> Lana looks up as the rest of them are silent and says 
under better circumstances, perhaps I would have. Mm, I see, and Rad takes his whole shirt off. <laughs> uh, are, are all classes of improvisation like this? Unfortunately, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Well, off to the dungeon with you. <laughs> <laughs> the guards walk over confusedly looking at like shirtless Rav standing there and all of them like bad timedly looking uh, as buckle, uh, buckle Jeremy. Buckle arrests yeah. one of these two and Buckle's like, Avalor, I'm always surprised, but thy methods always work. <laughs> Take the person away. <laughs> um... Indeed, but Buckle, do go easy on them, for they are not the perpetrators themselves, and I do think mayhaps they were coerced into being dirty little spies. Not to mention, they now make up at least half of the only improv team I have in this part of the world, so <laughs> I would that thou wouldst return them to me when possible. Is that their punishment? <laughs> <laughs> Twelve years hard improv. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well buckle um with your with your uh guards you can you can lead them away. Mm -hmm. Um to where uh Therion will will show you there is a uh, a dungeon, you have to take them outside into a courtyard and then into a, a separate building that is made of sort of um, heavy stone and reinforced lumber. Um, going through some keys, uh, you'll see to it that um, they all get locked up and their any any relevant um, equipment or goods they have on them will be confiscated as well. While like that's what? happening, um, like uh, you'll actually find, uh, there's our Caliban, you will find that they have uh, a couple of um, basic sets of keys uh, to the various outbuildings. Um, check something real quick. I think we... Uh, okay, we do have Caliban back on stream. I'm just checking. Yep, good. Yeah, uh, I was worried. It's okay. I was worried the blackout had, had not translated from here, but it has. Uh, okay. Um, You'll see that they've got a couple of basic keys to the outbuildings, like um, lock boxes near the stables uh, and uh, and things like that. Um, one of them uh, has a uh, a sheaf of uh, some scratch paper and a charcoal pencil, and you can see that it seems like uh, Bryson has been scribbling some some very like poor poorly handwritten but abbreviated notes. About what's going on, what was going on in the um, the ceremony with Vela and her announcement and things like that. Um, and uh, scoop. <laughs> in addition, uh, both Bryson and Torrance have a couple of more keys than they should, uh, including some that look like they belong to some of the fancier doors uh, in um, in the the proper house. You'd have to show them to Myra to be sure, really. Okay. I take I take the, the keys and the paper. Okay. Um, the rest of the the staff and guards are still there in the room with you. Um, and so I suppose it's up to it's up to you now. Um, Arwen being the presumptive MC along alongside Rav, possibly what we all do. Um, Myra. Ah, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Myra is there too. <laughs> I definitely remembered. <laughs> uh, yes, have you have you spoken to everyone to your satisfaction? Yes, I'm satisfied that all but four uh, knew nothing of the plot and therefore can be trusted. Those Good. four who cannot, as you have seen, have been taken in irons. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Indeed, it sounds. I assume that Bowen's spoken to you all. About yeah, it. I've passed on everything I, I know. Yeah, you and can swap it, you know. Yeah, the oh, actually, Myra, I hope is it still within the ten minutes? A chance. Um, you you can maybe catch like under a minute 
It, are you hoping to ask Myra? Yes. Yeah. I, I do hope that that is take no offense from this, yeah. but I would, I do have to ask thee as well. Does thou know anything thou hast not shared with us of the plot? Um, well, I, I did not know it were a plot until, until what you did reveal. I did hope it were not a plague. And while I am relieved it to find that we have not that to fear, I am... Oh, I do regret me so that any could take into their hearts to do such a thing to my fane, my ladies, my lord. We did not deserve such a bad thing. And of course, I did not know. I did not know what would transpire. I did have dislike and distrust for that fellow Worthington, of whom I have spoken to ye. I do wish me that I had... I know not what I would have done. Well, we know all that we... Well, we... Oh, goodness. Myra, we know now that he is working with Edmund, and that Edmund did send some assassin through hidden passageways to, to murder you. The good lady. Oh. We'll be returning with Edmund, and we have enough proof that it was by Edmund's planning. Or, um, uncle upon niece. My brother-in-law to brother-in-law. Such violence. Such horror. It is, it is to be damned and doubly damned. Indeed. Sorry. Family ties do not, do not mean the same to all people. But Mara, you have done well. Oh. You have done so well. All of you. Such a gift. A cutting, sharp gift this is to any of one of my such stations. I can tell thee I wish I had such a thing at my disposal whene'er I did first on take on board all of these and others besides. I think I should have saved myself some good trouble. They were made to answer such questions. Good Barwin, I thank you. And Rabelor and Avery and Caliban, Captain Buckle and Padraig. Uh, <laughs> uh, as I did say before, the estate is at thy disposals, and I shall show thee um, suitable trappings wherein thou may, you may take your rest this even, and, and we shall our best to prepare um, a good meal, such as we have, uh, and perhaps on the morrow we shall proceed in the business of more trustworthy hands finding to fill this place, guards to guard it, and you may continue in the business of preparing the arrival of that fulsome man. And how, then, you long, notice you... how long will that be, sorry? Good Lord Rivers did indicate that he were not sure, but thought it would be two to three days. Mayhaps we should uh, send a fake letter from Bryson so that he is unaware that we have caught his spies as it be i can i can actually uh i'm a pretty good uh forger <laughs> if you would like to i i guess yeah i'm thinking we'll have a montage where we <laughs> like three amigos styles <laughs> <laughs> love this oh that's three uh, <laughs> yeah uh, yeah 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 we're gonna, yeah, set up traps around. Mm. <laughs> Just the, yeah. But does, in sooth, thou trust this man whom we have clapped in irons to deliver such a message for thee? Nay, not at all. But I see. we find out how surely he did not deliver the message by foot. He he must have had a means by which he... Oh, he handed, he handed the... Um, the letters to Worthington, who then passed it on. Well, I, I have the glamour-studded armor. 
What do you mean by this? I can disguise myself as Bryson. In Zeus? Can it be so? Indeed, and I, can... I do have the actor's ability to mimic. We can both be Bryson. <laughs> Thou would move thine mouth, I should do the words. Can I, can I, can <laughs> Perhaps I... you should just be Bryson. <laughs> can I polymorph someone into Bryson? No, you can only Bryson. polymorph someone into a beast. Come on, we talk about this all the time. Just someday you just have to let us polymorph into people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and to be fair, like, Patrick was always talking to Bryson and being like, hey, what's up, my beast? He was a beast, like... Yeah, to be fair. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> there, there, are other, there are other spells that can accomplish uh, something mm -hmm. similar, but polymorph, those of you who can cast it, uh, yeah. know that it, it transforms uh, a creature into a new form. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Huh. Let's see. The new form can be any beast whose challenge rating is equal to or less than the target. So yeah, it has to have the creature type beast. There is some flexibility on that type with some creatures, especially in uh, and the cosmology as I have, have brewed it to be. But that's a thing you can discover uh, if you need to. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, um, Bryson does not qualify as uh, as a target. Or, what we uh, could do, or we can still, like, they're not going anywhere, so we can go down and have another chat, maybe in the interim, and see if there's any other way that they could pass on notes, rather than having you guys uh, leave our side when we probably do not want to split the party at this point. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe. Um, maybe. Well, maybe. if if any of you can, this, sub this subterfuge Oh, my goodness. Well, oh, it's stressful, isn't it, Myra? Mm. Indeed. Uh, You're doing in, great. Can you transform someone else into Bryson? Because I'm pretty sure Yennefer would uh would want to strike a deal to avoid going to prison for theft. Yennefer's run away though, remember? She was the one she was one of the people that we I didn't open the box. And that's what what, what was in the box, probably, oh, right? Yennefer. Yeah. Rad hey, uses... Were it Jennifer they'll just speak of? I... No. Jennifer. <laughs> very very Rad. well. Rad uses... Jennifer, what do you know about Jennifer? <laughs> I know no such Jennifer. Only Jennifer is one of the workers of this house, or were. I have not seen her twice since last night. Jeez. Uh, she, she is absconded, yeah. Brad uh, uses his actor feet to do a perfect imitation of Myra's voice, and he says, subterfuge. Ah. <laughs> yes. Good heavens. What, what wonders. <laughs> wonders, strange wonders, the lot of you. I should have thought I'd known self. <laughs> if you can this subterfuge perform, why then it should create some precious time in which we can prepare. I I would not have thought that the man, his lordship Edmund, would have been capable of or more than conniving and and cunning business practice to be token. I, and mayhap even if he did seek power to seize, I, I thought sure he would make all haste to do so, but not if he were willing to do this. Here we must expect the worst. Mm, we may need more hands. Uh, I'll uh, get the edicts ready. Mm. Edicts? edicts? Um, well, in that case, um, I shall your welcome complete and show you where you are to pass your evenings. Uh, and any such other uh, questions you may have of me, and I shall happily answer betimes. Um, and Myra takes you to uh, chambers where you can make yourself comfortable. There are plenty uh, and ample ones, uh, pretty well appointed uh, on the upper levels of the place. Um, you can sort of set up a place for yourself and put down your packs or anything like that. Uh, and uh, the rest of the evening is, is yours to do what you will with. Um, we are, uh, however, reaching the end of our time. 20 past. So, well, just know that Rav is going to spend at least part of the evening 
playing Bunny Bunny by himself, <laughs> using his mimicry <laughs> to throw. Actually, that would work better with Rhyme and Associate. He's going to play Rhyme and Associate, but doing the voices of Jeremy and Lana. Oh, but good at it this time. <laughs> Patrick's going to the local Froyo place and waiting for D-Bone. No, that's not a thing. You're going to have to go to Ben Froyo. <laughs> I'm not putting outside the realm of possibility, but it's on you. You're going to have to make it. Um, Imagine if that's what Padraig's like legendary tale ends up being. <laughs> the founder of frozen oh, yogurt. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it be though? Take Wait. the take the world by storm. Something just occurred to me. Where's Alda? <laughs> outside is a donkey smash cut <laughs> there is a very like grumpy looking donkey is looking around looking left and looking right <laughs> gently when no one else is around will lean forward snip the rope that is loosely tied to the halter mm. and creep in donkey form but in strange gait for any donkey, if you can see it sort of gradually <laughs> slinking its legs forward, uh, Alda, in illusory donkey form, creeps into the nearby lake and disappears beneath the surface. Oh, you had to ask. <laughs> None of you know that yet. Yeah. Uh, that <laughs> will finish tonight's session oh, of Bardic Inspiration. Uh, it's time for us to extend some thank yous uh, to many deserving folks. Uh, thank you, as always, to Matt Day, our Technomancer in Residence and designer of Rollcast. Uh, the allows us to have these slick dice uh, and our ability to conveniently stream it to you. Uh, thank you as well to Eric Matias, whose music you are hearing on stream. Uh, you can check out more of Eric's work on soundimage.org, uh, and the link is in the bio. Um, thank you to all of you who have watched uh, with us on stream here tonight. We appreciate you so much uh, that you're spending your Sunday evening with us. If you're watching later on our channel uh, at Bardic Inspiration, thank you uh, for finding us. You can please uh, subscribe there uh, and also find us on Twitter and TikTok at Bardic underscore inspo. And you can find out more about us at soothplayers.com. Uh, where you can also learn about our other live, in-person, improvised comedy shows that we used to do, and that you saw a, a sort of exorcism of <laughs> earlier tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry, and you're welcome. Uh, in any case, um, thank you. As thank you to all of you for that. Good God, I didn't know I needed that. Uh, um, thank you all for mucking in, as always. Uh, and we will finish tonight, uh, as we always do, by echoing the bard and saying uh, thanks, thanks, and more thanks. Until a fortnight hence, goodbye, and see the uh, see the magical cane bed next week at the same time. Goodbye. <laughs>